What's up, guys? Welcome back to an another episode of Can We Talk? Because we want to talk about this Danielle Miller little short interview that she had with WAGS on her IG channel about a week ago. And Danielle kind of filled us in on some information that we didn't have prior information to, although she talked in circles. But anyway, we're here to talk about it. And we want to know what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe, like the channel, leave your comments below, turn on your notification to all, and let's talk about it. So, I just don't, I don't even know where to start with this one. I don't even know where to start with this one. I just know that I was scrolling one morning and being a little nosy, I'll admit it. And I kind of stumbled upon Danielle's page on purpose. And I saw her, <laughs> <laughs> I saw her little IG thing and I was like, hmm, so what's this about? And I noticed that she had went live and she said that she was waiting on someone to come up on her page and it was Wags. And I'm not sure if you guys know who Wags is because I sure don't. But anyway, I didn't go to research her either because I was really only interested in Danielle's story. But she was basically just giving us some information about how she um, had been casted for a basketball wives Orlando and that the storyline that they are showing about her is not actually her storyline that she had intended to come on with and I need people to understand that when I was casted for basketball wives Orlando my storyline had nothing to do with Mackenzie oh, oh okay I oh, had no see. idea who Mackenzie was with and she's saying that they're giving her a bad edit and she had a few things that she wanted to get up off of her chest and let you guys know that She's not a bitter baby mama the way they are showing her and that a lot of the information that she found out about Miss McKenzie happened a week before she was supposed to show up in Orlando. Dun, dun, dun. So let's get into it. What do you want to start, Adrian? You want to go ahead and start about when she took off her ring and all that stuff? Oh, yeah, because she took off her ring this year. She took off her ring in March 2023. So, yeah, like the engagement was over in March of this year. And let's see how many months ago that was. That was what, like eight months ago? Mm -hmm. About seven, seven almost ago? eight. Yeah, seven. It'll be eight next month. In March, I took my ring off. Okay. I March. said, you know what? This was March 2000 this year. Okay. Not last year, not the year before last, not the year before. No, we talking about everything that happened is this year. This is fresh. Like the year ain't even up yet. Mm -hmm. I'm still dealing with this stuff in real time. And so this is still very fresh to her. So I kind of get why she's, you know, been acting the way she's been acting but also don't get why she's been acting the way she's been acting let me explain why so Rashard told this chick that he did not want to be monogamous he admitted to not being a good partner and that he didn't think he could be a good partner for any woman and he thought that maybe if they you know had an open relationship because he wanted multiple women that that would work best for him he basically came to me like I don't believe I'm it's hard for me to be monogamous I'm not a good partner to you I haven't been a good partner to you I don't think I can be a good partner to any woman I think I want to have multiple women and maybe that's just gonna work out for me and babe so she did say that and she talked about he wanted multiple women so I'm like is it he just wants an open relationship or does he want multiple wives? Like what's <laughs> going on here? Um, is he a Hebrew Israelite? I mean, inquiring <laughs> minds want to know. I, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Babe, I'm wondering because I really, I honestly don't think he was ready to get married and he knew it. But let's talk about this because. As she informed us, you know, because like I said, a girl talked in circles. So it was kind of hard to keep up with what she was saying because she started on something and she jumped somewhere else and she come back. But what she basically let us know is that um, this is not, Rashad has cheated on her before. 
So mm -hmm. she's used to having indiscretions with him. They've been together for eight years and she's used to his stuff. And she kind of excuses it with, well, you know, men are going to be men, especially these guys that, you know, play ball and stuff. So she was giving him an excuse, which in part, in my mind, made him feel like it was OK because you kept staying. So you had no mm -hmm. standards. So yes, she he did allowed him to do. She was like, I'm not no oblivious female. I knew what it was and I was OK with it. Well, if you was OK with it, what is the problem with Mackenzie? Because you're OK with it. I, obviously, I've dealt with infidelities before. Okay. Obviously, I've dealt with cheating. Like, come on, we're going to be honest. Let's keep it real. Keep it G. We know how these athletes move. OK. We know how they operate. And I'm not no oblivious female. Like, oh, he wasn't doing nothing. I'm delusional. Like, no, I know what it was. Like, I knew I was, you know, dealing with shit. I was OK with it, okay. obviously, because I stayed with his ass, okay. right? Like <laughs> that. You, gonna have, you can't pick and choose. You said you was OK with all the infidelity. So, I mean, if you are still seeing him and he's with her as well, you said it ain't nothing new. And you said you was OK with it because it is what it is. So I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I'm still lost. Because yeah. it honestly it didn't make sense to me because um she was basically saying that she moved, she went back home to San Diego, right? And they had been dating, you know, he was coming to see her, she would come back and see him and go to like all of his games and stuff. He'd fly her back. Um, but she act like it was like strange when she started. Well, this part is strange. Some hoe sending you random text messages of you of your man or your used to be man or your side man what is i'm confused honey because i don't think she understood what it was i don't know what's going on i'm still lost but your man that wanted an open relationship <laughs> somebody sending you pictures of her and him on tulum in tulum and we kind of know who it was because she she just kind of made the conclusion she said that mckenzie had been watching her page and she noticed that and she thought hmm this is strange. But then she noticed that Mackenzie and her friends were also watching her page. And so she said she thought that it was weird, but um, she really didn't read too much into it because she had been looking at the other girls uh, IG pages also because, you know, she kind of wanted to get familiar with them. She saw that they had large followings and all of that. And so she was saying that, you know, she had been kind of looking at them. They had been having some sidebar conversations because they were supposed to be getting ready to meet up in Orlando. But a week before she was supposed to arrive in Orlando, she started getting these messages of pictures from a burner account. And then uh, Mackenzie's friends started picking on her and calling her names and making ugly comments, you know, trying to be funny and stuff, calling her ugly. But what I'm taken aback by is that she was surprised that <laughs> he was with somebody else. And I don't understand if that it, if it's just because it was McKenzie and they're on a the show together or if she really thought that, OK, I'm going to leave and go home and maybe this is going to straighten him up and make him realize what he's missing. That's what I, I, I don't get it because he basically told you he wanted an open relationship. Yeah. And she really did talk in circles because she says she took her ring off. We know that on the show, she's saying that they're no longer engaged. She took her ring off. To me, that sounds like a breakup. But then in the, also in the interview, that's what she led with. But then she says, well, we're not really broken up because he didn't say he wanted to break up. He just said he wanted to be in an open relationship. So I don't think she knows where she stands or what her title is because you saying you took the ring off and now that's your ex-fiance, but then midway in the interview you tell this lady wags whatever her name is well i mean he should have just told me he didn't want to be with me but he didn't say that he just said he wants an open relationship so telling somebody you want an open relationship ain't technically breaking up with him so i don't know I, if he's the one who asked for it to end he didn't ask for it to end oh. i he wanted he wanted to be non-monogamous he wanted to apply oh, that ring to Oh, he asked you for an open relationship. He claimed he claimed he's not asking for open relationship. He it was you asking for open relationship. When you say non-monogamy to me, that means open. Mm -hmm. Just like I don't know what's going on, she don't know what's going on either. He should have he should have stood on the fact that he wanted to completely be done. Right. I would have respectfully 
stepped away from the situation right if, and just been a coach if he would have gave you a heads up didn't give me no heads up mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm like okay cool Boom. but it sounds like she didn't even try to make or get an understanding. It's like, she was just like, oh, well, I'm going to take my ring off and we still going to date. Because she kept saying that we're trying to work it out and, you know, work it out. What were you working out if you're not trying to sit and get an understanding of, hey, this is not what I want. I'm not cool with that. If this is what you want, then I'm out. It's like she was so trying to hold on to the man that she was willing to continue to accept bad behavior. So to me, that's just in my personal opinion, low self-esteem, because ain't no way in the world I'm going to be, um, first of all, married to a man or date engaged to a man, been with them for eight years, two kids later. And all of a sudden out of the blue, you tell me you want to open relationship and you admit that you're not good for any woman or not a good partner. No, nah, dog, you can go. I'm not sitting, standing around for that. But since she decided to stay, again, my question is, what's the problem with him being with Mackenzie? Is it because Mackenzie stalked her and how she came at her? Or is it just because it's Mackenzie? That, I'm still so confused by that. And I really wish Wags would have asked some better follow-up questions. Yeah, and Danielle also made the comment that she didn't know about Mackenzie when they started um, recording the season. And then once she found out about it, she asked production, did y'all know about Rashad and Mackenzie? And production confirmed that they knew. So this was a setup from the jump. Very much so. Very much so. Um, because basically that's, that's exactly what she said. She said that this had been Mackenzie's um, storyline from the beginning. And, Producers knew that. They also knew that Danielle's had been something completely different. Mm -hmm. Later on, I ended up finding out that that was original. That was a part of her storyline the whole time. She oh, had been secretly dating oh, him. Oh, yeah, because you know, I don't. She doesn't really give outside of Neek that she would have a storyline. Right. So then I, oh, then I, then I had made a comment like, oh, I feel like bitch is using me for a storyline because my thing is like, if I wasn't on the show, what would Mackenzie have to talk about? Who is she beef with? Her and Nick is cool. This is reality TV. So they kind of set her up and had her come. And she's saying that they gave her a bad edit because she's stating that a lot or most of what happened with her got cut out only to show the moments when she was going at Mackenzie. Mm, trifling. Yeah, but... This is what she kind of signed up for. We know what these shows are about. And you can't come on this show thinking that you're not going to be in no drama. And if you don't have drama tied to your storyline, they going to find one for you. It's cool. This is reality TV. Let's mm -hmm. be clear. It's about mm -hmm. drama. Definitely. 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 That She basically said that for herself. She said that she, she understands um, what she signed up for. But she's still pissed because they're not showing her true character and who she really is and that uh, they have their picks and chooses of who they like and they're choosing to show her as a bitter baby mom. But she also uh, goes on to say about um, how, girl, it's just so much. She goes on to say about how the other uh, every girl on there either has some drama some real drama going on or they have a hell of a storyline so basically from what i've seen thus far everybody's just all about drama because ashley and morgan that's drama mckenzie with danielle that's drama neek really don't have much drama she had drama with um mckenzie at first but that was kind of squashed so really neek and what's the what's the other girl name start with mulan Mulan really don't have much of a storyline so far from what I've seen. Um, Megan, mm, they just needed a face for the show. So they kind of brought her in. So I'm really just trying to figure out where this is going to go from here. But her whole thing was she does not appreciate it. So she wanted to catch up on the first through the third episodes and she's going to be coming back to give us more information because she doesn't like her edits. 
and she doesn't want to be casted as a bitter baby mama. So I get not wanting to come across as the bitter baby mama and I get being surprised. And so we're kind of getting her natural, honest reaction to all of the things. But I mean, she look, she can be very aggressive as we saw when she was in the boutique talking about, I ain't talking to no side bleep or what, however she said it. I don't remember. If she said the B or the H word. Don't, don't remember. But I'm just like, you keep saying it's a bad edit. The editors portraying you like that. They can only use what you gave them. They can only use what you gave them. Exactly. Exactly. Because um, <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she showed her, but a couple of times, like at that last dinner that, or not dinner, what was that? That girl's night out that Nick had and her and Morgan sit in that chair and they going back and forth, back and forth. That seemed a little bitter to me. And <sighs> Again, I can't really tie it to it. I think it's all it is all about you with my man, my man, my man. And don't neither one of y'all know whose man it is because she's saying that he's constantly telling her how much he loves her and she's her, she's his world. But then, I'm still sexually involved with him. Oh man, I'm still going to see him. I'm still it's giving like the ring is off, but we still got it. Yeah. Go. So but I'm then Mackenzie swears that that's her man, her man, her man. They've been taking trips to Tulum, but he's on Twitter stating that he ain't with nobody. He's single. So. It seems like neither one of these females know what's going on if they are really in a relationship or if they're both are y'all both side pieces he might have a main girl that they don't even know about he might and this one may be quiet and not trying to throw herself out there just for the show mckenzie you probably could have became the main girl had you kept your mouth shut but you with your burner account wanted her to know who you were so that you can get the shit popping on the show so she, with her burner account, started sending all of these random pics and messages, but neither one of y'all seemed to be the main chick. You just somebody he's sleeping with from what it sounds like to me. You know, and you and both course, are agreeing to it. And of course, we don't know this to be true, but it also makes me think, why if either one of you were the main girl, why would he allow y'all to go on a show like this? And he said, she's now from what she said, and like I said, we can only take her word for it at this point, but I have gone to his Twitter account and, you know, seen a lot of uh, things on there where he was saying that he was single. He was single. Uh, something about we're in a relationship, but we single and all that stuff. So yeah, I did. Kind of, I'm like, I'm sitting here like, you know, he, he basically telling Wait. me, no, you didn't see that? What you mean we in a relationship, but we... I don't understand. That's the kind of... These are the kind of games that Rashad is playing. We're in a relationship, but we single. So we we doing what we do, but we still single. And so basically, because like she said, when um she was... Remember when she said that um when she got there on set, that um she was going... She was supposed to be getting her hair done and how... Ashley had called around to the salons because uh, what's that girl name? Megan was supposed to be getting her hair done. And a Ashley's messy behind got Megan's appointment canceled and bumped and got Mackenzie put into her appointment just so they can run into each other at the salon. And so what she was saying is that she was on the phone with Rashad. And when she walked down the hallway, she bumps into Mackenzie and she's like, cause that was her first time seeing her. And she's like, is this this fake AB who's been sending me all these pictures and blah, 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 blah. And effing with me on, um, online. And so she said that she was, she walked into it. She said, yeah, I'm on the phone with your man, your man, your man. You don't remember that? Yeah. I remember that now. Yeah, and so she was saying that she had walked up to her and then Rashad was on the phone talking about, I'm single, Danielle, I'm single, Danielle. So he was basically saying that he was single there. And she also said that he had told her that um, even though he, you know, he had been messing with Mackenzie because it sounded like he kind of admitted to it, that he was single, he wasn't in a relationship with her, he wasn't claiming her, and that she would not be claiming him on the show as her man. Right. I'm not claiming no, no man that constantly telling the world he's single. Mm -hmm. I'm not claiming a man that's on Twitter right now liking posts about I'm uh you mine, I'm yours, but we single. I'm not I'm not dating 
to no man like that. And you know, and so she was saying that she didn't know if he was being bamboozled the way she's being bamboozled on the show, or if he's just lying, you know what I'm saying? Like he's been known to do. This is a mess. This is a hot mess. It's a hot mess. I'm like, <sighs> I, I really have no words. Just like Danielle, she was saying that at this point she is done with him. Her only thing is she doesn't want to look a certain way. I hope you mean it when you say you done with him. I just hope you mean it. I really do. I really do. Because at um, one of the things Wags brought up is that at Ashley's grand reopening, she asked her, she said, you know, that if he had been saying all of these things to you, uh, why didn't you confront her with it at the store? Right. And uh, Danny mentions that how in an episode, um, because this is a, this is what I'm telling you. This is exactly how it went. Wags asked her if this is happening. Why wouldn't you confront her with this info in the scene? So Danny goes on to mention how on the episode one of Morgan's uh, at Morgan's golf event where Megan had called Mackenzie a name to confront her that it was uh, Rashad. They had brought up Rashad and that whole scene had been about Rashad, but production cut out the whole scene. So they're cutting anything that kind of brings where she confronts her, really confronts her about the Rashad thing. And they're editing it so that it just seems like she's jumping her and making her look bad. And she goes on to say that um, the timeline between Mackenzie uh, that Mackenzie gives for her and Rashad isn't adding up. And wow. The timeline of when him and her started to communicate, it's not adding up. And my thing is, is if you claim that that was your man, why are you watching my page? Why are you stalking me? Why are you harassing me? They didn't show none of that. It's adding up. And that if that was her man, then why was she watching and stalking her page if he was supposed to be her man? So when I tell you that this interview was all over the place and I had a hard time catching up, really the main thing that I got from this interview is that she knew she was casted for the show. She had no idea about Mackenzie until a week before she was supposed to show up in Orlando. Mackenzie started sending her all of this information uh, and, and harassing her and stalking her the same way she did Neek. Then when she gets there, Ashley sets uh, sets it up where they bump into each other. And that kind of starts the whole kind of like real big blow up or whatever between the two. And then every time they bring up the Mackenzie and Rashard, because remember when Mackenzie first came on, they didn't really, they just said her boyfriend, they had his name next to her name, but we didn't put two and two together because they hadn't even brought Danielle up yet. But what happens is, as the show goes on, she said that when she did come onto the scene, she wasn't mentioning who her boyfriend was. Remember when her dad asked about the chicken farm? Um, I, yeah. All my stuff is still in Minnesota till this day. Okay. Like I haven't even moved all, all of my things yet. And isn't it's, isn't Mackenzie from Minnesota? Exactly. Okay. So Mackenzie is from Minnesota as well. Okay. Mind you, all of my things are still in San Diego. I mean, still in Minnesota. My mm -hmm. clothes, my shoes everything oh. like okay. till this day what's today october 17th all of my stuff exactly on the farm that's my best friend natalie all on the farm still to this day mm -hmm. my degrees my accolades all of my stuff yeah and she kind of wanted to keep it quiet and she didn't really bring up anything about that so she was trying to act like she was trying to be so quiet and keep it hush hush knowing that the whole time this is going to be her storyline because like wag said outside of um the richard thing and neek and because they squashed their stuff uh neek and mckenzie mckenzie doesn't really have a storyline she boring <laughs> she's boring <laughs> so and I don't understand why danielle thought that she would come on and they would just make up all peaches and rainbows about her and talk about her dreams of being a basketball star and how she gave it all up and now she's back on that path and blah 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 I don't know why she didn't think that she would get uh edit unless she's never really watched reality shows baby they coming for you 
So let me ask you this. Why do you think that they are working so hard for McKenzie to have a storyline? Like, what is it about McKenzie that do, do you think they see the produ production sees star quality in her? So they're trying to make fetch happen for her. Like, why is she getting this built in storyline to her advantage? Your guess is as good as mine because Mackenzie has nothing going on for herself. She has, she's boring. I mean, completely boring. And I'm just like, it's like watching paint dry whenever her scenes come on. Because even when she's confronted, although she wanted this to be her storyline and she wanted her and Danielle to go after each other, she sits there like a mute puppy and without anything really to say. So I'm like, if you want to be that girl and you wanted it to be about you and Danielle getting into it over this man, you ain't bringing nothing to the scene. So I'm not sure why. And I mean, let me just say, I don't know if it's because of color. Or versus, you know what I'm saying, the way she supposedly looks versus how Danielle looks, that they're going to make her that girl? I don't know. But it just does not make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense. So I don't know why she's the good person. But, you know, every season, they'll bring somebody on. And they have to make somebody the villain. And right now is Morgan and Danielle. They're making those two ladies the uh, villain. Morgan's doing a very good job of making herself the villain, though. Let's just put that out there. Uh, Danielle's following up in her shadows very closely <laughs> with the bull crap. So you kind of uh, who you associate yourself with is who you start to act like a lot of times. And they're feeding off of each other's bitterness. So let me just put that out there. Neither one of them are really trying to heal, help the other one heal or be like, girl, because first of all, let's talk about why Morgan got divorced in 2020. But here it is 2023. And we still fighting with Ashley about her ex-husband. Let's talk about that. Well, are we positive that the divorce was in 2020? Was it a year or two before? Because he had a whole new girlfriend in 2020 and she gave birth to twins in 2020. Child, either way. It's, it's been happening for a while, so this ain't nothing new. And just because Ashley was serving people up, he was still very willing to spread it low and wide to everybody who would take some. So, and I'm pretty yeah. sure he was chasing Ashley down to get to the girls too. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, they're making themselves out to be the villains on here because, like you said earlier, you can only use, they could only use what you give them. And Morgan is up here acting as though her separation from her ex is fresh. It's not fresh. Danielle has a fresh one seven months ago, but Morgan, yours ain't fresh. At all. At all. And so I kind of get Danielle's hurt. Although she said she's healing and you know what I'm saying? And journaling and all that other stuff and getting over it. I just still feel like if Rashad were to come back today and say, let's put our family back together. I believe she'd be back. Like, I mean that. What do you think? Although she says she's done. I don't believe her. It's it just the actions don't match the words to me. It just doesn't. Um, I get being pissed off with Mackenzie for harassing you and stalking you. And very, yes, confront her behind about that. Confront her, get on her, whatever you need to do. But at that point, it should be let it go. Because all this, you know what I'm saying? He ain't with you. He ain't this. Obviously, neither one of y'all really know what the hell. Rashad doing he ain't with neither one of y'all he's with both of y'all and whoever else lets him be with him because he basically told you the truth he did not want a monogamous relationship so if he can be with you and if he can be with Mackenzie that's what he's doing because you allowed it to happen period but um let's just get back to some of this interview stuff um Wags brings up how Basketball Wives Orlando seems clicky. And Danielle admits that it's very clicky and that there are two camps, Team Morgan and Team Ashley. And I think anybody that has watched that show gathered that very early on. And mm -hmm. Wags asks how she feels uh, her mindset will be going 
into the reunion. And Danny says that her mind going into a reunion, she's going to go in listening, trying to gain clarity and understanding. She lying. That's what I thought. I'm like, girl, bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's she not going to be that at all. That's what you say. Just like Morgan always says she ain't bothered. And Ashley's the one bothered with her. But she think about Ashley all day, all night and how she could torture that girl. I don't believe it. <laughs> Lies. Talking about <laughs> she going to go in listening. Girl, you can't listen with your mouth. You bad. And that mouth stay running. You hear me? <laughs> that mouth stay running. So Wags also asked her, uh, what quality does she feel like a bitter baby mama carries? And Danny says, uh, it has to be a current situation going on with a man. Uh, she feels like if the woman is popping up at the house, stalking, calling new girlfriend names, not allowing him to see the kids to her, that's pretty much what a bitter baby mama is. But she says that her and Richard don't poop on each other's parents. He's an exceptional father. He may be lacking at the moment, but he loves his children and they came together as co-parents uh, not to have anyone else around. And they agreed not to have anyone else around their children. I don't know how that's going to work. Because she also kind of um, made uh, kind of like let us know a little bit that she's dating someone. But she wouldn't wouldn't really go into that. And so Wags asked her if that would be on the show. And she was just kind of like, that's when she starts going into supporting her brand and blah, 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 blah. Because, of course, you know, she can't really let us know what's coming up on the show. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know, I can be nosy at times. Well, let's stop playing. I'm nosy all, at all times. <laughs> so I went down to the good Google to find out more about uh, Rashad and Danielle. And what I found out was they basically met in college at UNLV. They were both on the basketball team. He was a freshman on the basketball team and she was a senior because she is four years older than him. And I believe he only played one year and then went into the NBA draft. And at that time, when she was done with her senior year, it looks like she went overseas to play. And she kind of talked about that um, in the interview about going overseas to play. But, you know, I don't want to get into the whole, you know, she's dating a younger guy. But because she started dating him when he was a freshman in college, he wasn't mature then. And it looks like he's gained no maturity because she allows him to be immature. Exactly. She's put up with it. Exactly. And she swear now, she says she has never cheated on her man and she's never gone outside of their relationship. But she sat and dealt with and allowed him to cheat on her. So I always tell people, I mean, it's like one of my main things. People will treat you the way you allow them to treat you. So if you put up with it once, best believe they going to come back and do it again. I'm just, I'm sorry. It's just, that's life. So my thing is this, if you can show me at the beginning that you don't give a crap about me and you don't respect me, deuces, nigga, move on. Cause I am <laughs> move the hell on because that's just not something that I'm willing to deal with. Do you not realize how much I mean, AIDS, herpes, Genital warts, stuff you can't get rid of is out here. Um, thank you, but no thank you. You can keep it. You and Mackenzie have fun. Okay. Okay. It just showed Bye. me kind of where her mindset is. Because a lot of times you just have to, all you have to do is be quiet and let somebody talk. And what they say will tell them a lot about, tell you a lot about themselves. And she just kept, now, we kind of touched on this earlier, but I'm going to repeat what she said. And I'm going to say it the way she said it, because she was proud. She was proud to make this statement. She says, because I'm not an oblivious female. I'm and I'm not no oblivious female. Like, oh, he wasn't doing nothing. I'm delusional. Like, no, I knew what it was. Like, I, knew I knew what it was and I was OK with it. I knew what it was. Like, I knew I was, you know, dealing with shit. I was OK with it, okay. obviously, because I stayed with his okay. ass, right? So Her tone and the way she said that. She was proud to let us know she's not oblivious. Okay, sure. you're not oblivious. You know what's going on. But your mindset was, it is what it is. I'm okay with it. Why were you okay with it? 
probably because you was like, oh, he going to the NBA and I'm going to be a NBA wife living this certain lifestyle. So I'm just going to be OK with it. Well, where did that get you? It got you a McKenzie. And two kids, and now you're a single mom. So, mm. but some of these women, and I'm not saying this about Danielle. I am not saying this about Danielle because I do believe that she loved that man. And that was her man, her man, her man, honey. Because she was willing to put up with his shit, his shit, his shit. But <laughs> anyway, I just believe that Mm. I don't want to say nothing negative. So I'm going to keep my, no, I'm going to keep that to myself. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. Cause I don't even want it to be like, I'm putting that on Danielle because I'm not, but honey. Send it to me in the text. (laughs) Send it to me in the text. (laughs) Well, I'll go ahead and say it. I believe that a lot of these women, uh, they, they would love to have the marriage and the man and, you know, to be on his arm and be at all the games and stuff, but hell, if they can get a baby out of it and get some good child support, they'll do that too. Well, so that's just what I'm saying. And then for them to, and so many of them, especially on this, uh, Orlando one talking about how, you know, that's just how men are. Stop excusing that crap. No, if you can, if you say that enough times, you're going to buy in it, buy into it, and you're going to believe it, and you're going to allow them to treat you however they want to treat you because you feel like they're all the same, and that's just it is what it is. We need to stop with this. It is what it is. True. We got to stop it. We have to. And one of the things that I wonder is how her home life was, because now she she mentioned that her she did not come from a broken home. She came from a two parent home and her parents are still together today. But then it makes me wonder, was your dad stepping outside your marriage and your mom was just like, it is what it is. And that's where you learn that behavior. Or are you just so willing to say that, you know, you and your kid that your kids have both a mother and a father that you're willing to put up with the foolishness. It's, it just, mm-hmm. it makes me wonder those are just questions as Wanda would say, I don't know if y'all know who Wanda is from love and marriage Huntsville, but I got questions and I'd be asking them questions. Where does this behavior come from? Because th- it just, mm-mm. no. Mm-mm. And this whole, this whole, it is what it is mindset. If you have that mindset, then you're not going to do anything about the situation that you're in. It can be what it is, but what are you going to do to change what it is? You always have a choice. You don't have to stay in that situation. You have a choice. Okay, it is what it is. But am I going to accept it? Am I going to change something? Am I going to leave it alone? You have a choice. The choice is yours. But now... Let me not say or be completely biased because I understand that mistakes happen and people have a moment. But if if you being the man or the woman are willing to forgive it once, that should be the end of any indiscretion. I my personal on my personal opinion at the big old age that I am now, it's a hell no for me. But everybody's not like that. So if you decide that, okay, it happened, it was a bad moment, you know what I'm saying? And for whatever reason, you decide you're going to stick around and you allow this to happen again and nothing happens, just understand that this is what's going to happen moving forward, okay? Because ain't no way in the world you're going to do it once and I forgive you and then you do it again. That straight up lets me know you really don't give a crap about me, about my feelings or about, you know what I'm saying, what we supposedly had going on. And I am a strong because I know how I am as a woman. If a woman loses trust, that is the hardest. It, even a man, if anybody loses trust, that's one of the hardest things to ever get back. Because when that person does something out of character, you're going to be looking side eye like, nigga, what you up to? You said. So anyway, I'm just saying, if you forgive that indiscretion once and then they turn around and do it again. 
Love yourself enough to walk away. Choose you. You don't always have to choose that other person. Choose you because I would rather be lonely and hurt for a little bit and finally get over it than to hurt over and over and over and over again and find myself in this repetitive state of hurt, of depression, of sadness, feeling lonely in my relationship, wondering where he or she's at. I just mm -mm. let me hurt, get over the hurt and move the hell on with my life. Those are just some words of wisdom from an OG, okay? You have anything else you want to talk about? This, uh, Danielle thing, anything that you can think about that we haven't covered? So, even even the, after this whole season, you still don't understand what they were or what that was even? I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. I'm still lost. Like I said, I don't know nothing. And apparently Danielle don't either. <laughs> but you guys can definitely check out the whole interview for yourself it is on her ig page she said that she would leave it up you can definitely go check her out and listen to the whole interview it's about an hour long and she's going to talk you in circles but if you have time and you want to know everything she said go over to her ig and take yourself a listen anyway leave your comments down below let us know what you think if you disagree with anything I said, put it below. Let's talk about it because this is what we do over here. We talk about situations, whether we agree or disagree, as long as we're doing it respectfully, let's hit it up down in the comments. And you know what? We'll see you guys on tomorrow night or maybe Tuesday because we're going to be watching Basketball Wife. So we'll see you guys on Tuesday for another episode of Can We Talk? Bye. Bye. <laughs> I've been wanting to do that. Bye, guys. <laughs>